Hey you guys, this is Michelle, and you're about to watch um, a series that I've been doing on Facebook that I'm fixing to start uploading onto YouTube. Anyways, you're going to see a whole bunch of downloads that are coming fairly quickly. Watch this at your leisure. Anyways, hey, so I am really trying to build my YouTube channel. I am fairly new on YouTube, so I have a really big following on Facebook, and I'm trying to build this area of my um plethora here. Anyway, so if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and really help me build my YouTube following. I really appreciate it. Anyway, here we go, you guys. You ready? 30 days to spiritual bliss. Hey, you guys. So I decided that I'm going to start a 30 days to spiritual bliss. Now, I've decided that um, I'm going to do call it spiritual bliss instead of spiritual enlightenment because guess what you guys you're already enlightened so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post a video daily and you just basically just kind of walk through that through the steps and it'll be fun and um, and then you just kind of try to like actually get like a, a notebook or like a spiral or something and start writing down some of these principles okay and try to just add on one at a time every day. So the first one that I'm gonna to talk to you about is the thing that you hear all the time. And what is that? You hear be present, be in the now. You know, I mean, there's books written about it. But the thing is, is that most people seem to have a problem with this. It seems to be the biggest thing that most people have a problem with is being present. And most people don't even know how. So let's just kind of go over that right now. What is being present? And and so I was sitting with one of my clients the other day. And and I asked him. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I'm present. I'm present. And I go, are you present with me right now? And he goes, yeah, I'm with you. I'm here. And and I said, I said, what are you thinking about? Are you thinking about anything else besides what we're talking about? And he said, well, yeah, I'm kind of thinking about, you know, some stuff that I needed to do at home and everything else. And I said, okay, well, you're not being present. So let's just go over exactly what that means, okay? Exactly what that means. Hey, Mom, how are you doing? <laughs> My mom just logged in. So the first principle that we're going to talk about today to be spiritually in bliss, to get yourself balanced spiritually. And now I'm not talking religiously, so it doesn't matter what your religion is, okay? You can be Christian, you can be Buddhist, you can be Muslim, I don't care. It doesn't matter. We're talking about being balanced spiritually. Yes, let's get present in the moment. Okay, but most people don't know what that means, Matthew. That's a big problem, is that most people don't understand what that means. So, what does it mean to be present? Being present means that you put 100% of your energy and your thought into what it is you're doing. So I like to try an exercise that I've put people to do so that they can really understand what it means to be present. So what I want you to do is I want you to go and grab a blanket or a sheet or something like that. And I want you to go, good morning, Karina. Um, and I want you to fold it, okay? Just fold it. Like, go grab it right now. Anything. Something that you can fold. And I want you to fold it. Now, as you're folding it, you know, when you finish folding it, you know, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to fold a blanket right now with you guys, okay? So, I'm going to fold this blanket as I'm talking to you. And I'm going to sit here and go through the motions of folding this blanket. Okay. So, blank is folded, okay? So, as I folded this blanket, what was I thinking about? Well, obviously I'm thinking about doing this video, right? And I'm looking at the blanket and it's kinda halfway done. It's not really done well, but the thing was is that I have a program inside of my mind. And my program in my mind is memory of how to do that. So I can actually fold this blanket while I'm talking to you. So is that being present? No. No, I was not present. I was halfway here. Hey, Sandra D'Angelo, how are you doing? So, I wasn't present. I was 
talking to you and I'm sitting here folding this blanket so the blankets kind of halfway crappy done and so that's not necessarily being present okay that is a program that your brain already knows how to do so you know I used to before I was with Shane I would um, talk to these guys and they would say I can do more than one thing at a time you know men are really skilled that way right and so I was like yeah but you're not being present with me and so now what I want you to do is take your blanket okay and I want you to take your blanket this time and I'm gonna do it with you so you just be patient with me here okay and only thing I want you to do is think about folding the blanket that's it just think about folding the blanket this time I want you to fold it in a way that is not the same um, most miss the importance of practicing presence oh yeah absolutely Sandra okay so I'm trying to show you guys how to do this so take the blanket this time and fold it differently than you normally do so do it outside of a, your program like so I'm gonna take my blanket and I'm gonna fold it completely different so hold off because I'm gonna be present folding my blanket Now look at my blanket. Look at how perfect it is. Okay, so what did I do here? Well, first off, I didn't even talk to you. I was so focused on folding the blanket that nothing else was in my mind. The blanket was folded absolutely perfect and all of my thoughts and all of my energy was folding the blanket. Okay, so that's hey Joe haven't seen you in so long miss you guys um, yes exactly Sandra exactly that is absolutely right and the thing is is that but Sandra the thing is you and I know this but most people that I encounter do not know how to be present. They say that their mind is just going in eh, constantly all the time and they don't, they can't seem to calm themselves down. They're experiencing this like anxiety and, and they don't know how to get outside of that. So you wanna cure your anxiety, become present, okay? And that means that you focus 100% on that. I'm gonna give you another exercise. Go and get an apple, get an orange, okay? And these exercises are crucial to teaching you how to be present. And this is a really important thing spiritually because if you don't, if you can't be present while you're meditating, if you can't be present when you're um, doing some kind of spiritual practice, whatever that may be. Let's say that you're, um, you're Muslim. So I have a client that is Muslim and I asked her to show me exactly how she, she prays. And, and so what she did was she, she told me that she puts an intent, a thought, and what it is she's going to pray about. And, um, and then she goes through this exercise where she kind of goes down on the floor and then back up and then down on the floor again. And then she goes back to the intent and you really have to um you really have to like really be present to do this because it's kind of hard you know and and i was actually really quite impressed with it because i thought you know this is a great thing that a lot of people could do and do it for a different reason because you have to focus on a not falling being balanced you know it's kind of a, a combination between being present, meditation, exercise, yoga, you know, it's kind of all those things. So, you know, there's a lot of different things that you can do um, to practice being present so you can train your brain to be able to concentrate on one thing and you'll find that it relieves your anxiety so much. So let's talk about the other exercise that you can do. Getting an apple, getting an orange, okay? So go and get yourself um, a knife and 
like a peeler like something that you would you know those little peelers that you kind of do like you peel um, a potato or something and I want you to take the apple and I want you to peel the apple with the peeler okay and I want you to just focus on creating some kind of design with it like really get creative and just take the peeler and just peel the apple very slowly very intently put in all your energy and the only thing you're thinking about is peeling the apple now once you're done I want you to sit that apple aside completely out of eyesight and I want you to go grab a knife and grab an orange and immediately shift your focus just like that and I want you to take that knife and start peeling the orange and the only thing you think about is that orange smell the orange feel the texture of the orange really keep yourself like focused 100% on the orange okay now what you'll find by doing this exercise is that you can shift your mind and change it just like that and you can move your presence of your mind from one thing to another thank you Sandra and a lot of people say that they can't they don't have any focus well that's not true it's just it's like it is no different your brain is a muscle so it's no different than exercising your body the first time that I got back into the gym I remember how hard it was I mean it was so tough I had injured my back and I had you know and I was finally at a point where I could you know get back in and start doing stuff and I was so out of shape that I remember falling on the floor and crying like a baby I mean no shit I was crying <laughs> I was really crying and Shane's like what are you doing and I was like I'm so upset because like, the simplest things are so hard and over time it got to a point to where I was able to do a whole lot more now I'm in the gym and I'm, I'm lifting heavy weights and literally I can leg press as much weight as my husband and so I mean I've really built up that muscle strength and the ability to be able to do more so that's the same thing with your brain it takes time you've got to you've got to put in practices into your life and if you can if you can do these little things like this then you can learn how to meditate and every person that I talk to that comes into my office they are always telling me when I ask them can you meditate and or do you meditate they say well I try uh, well you know the thing is is that every single person that I have taught how to meditate they do just fine you know I think you put too many high expectations on something all you have to do is just put your focus in on one thing if you can focus on peeling an orange you can meditate in fact that is meditation and so just be present now what's the importance of being present everybody says oh yeah you know I'm supposed to be in the now and all this other stuff okay and they just don't understand the importance of it any advice of deleted a tem tempore program what do you mean I'm not really sure of deleted a tempore program and Sandra you're gonna have to explain that a little bit more I'm not really sure exactly what you're talking about so um, anyways going back to what I was saying is that most people don't really understand why it's important to be present well if you were watching my video yesterday I know it's kind of all over the board I talked about a lot of different stuff but um, the thing is is that it's really important because most of the problems that you have in your life is because you weren't present and so what does this have to do with being spiritual well, it has a lot to do with being spiritual because how can you actually get to a point where you feel like you're enlightened if you have so much regret so much pain so much um, history that you're focusing on that isn't you know pleasing behaviors that you've done I have a I have a temper oh a temper I thought you said tempore <laughs> and so I was like the Knights of the Temple or something like that um, ways of deleting which has helped me but I want to delete those program um, Sandra actually what I would like you to do is um, um, send me a, a private message and I'll talk to you about it and then I'll do I'm gonna actually do a, a completely different um, show on this that's separate but today I'm gonna focus just on being present 
and I can talk to you privately about that, okay? Um, so anyway, so going back to, no problem, no problem. So basically the biggest problem, let me just kind of address this because I, you know what, it is important. Anger is not accepting something, okay? That's all it is. It's the state of non-acceptance. And so if you are getting mad about something, that means that you're not accepting the situation, that it's pissing you off, okay? And people have different opinions about things. People have different states. Most people, most humans, um, as a species, we seem to think that everything's black or white. So it's, this is, this is the way it should be, this is the way it should be. Um, I think it should be like this, I think it should be like that. And, and so if you're in that state um, where you just do not accept somebody else's opinion about something, and that comes across a lot religiously, um, you'll find that a lot of people have very strong opinions about certain things, um, even politically, and, um, and also in relationships. And those are the three most common areas that you find that people tend to um, have tempers about because they think that you should behave a certain way or act a certain way or whatever and people have ideal ideas about something. So if you're in the state of non-acceptance, that means I do not accept that, I don't accept that behavior, I don't accept that thought, I don't care, accept that mindset, and that means that you're in that state of non-acceptance, okay? If you're in the state of non-acceptance, the answer is to get into the state of acceptance and then you won't fly off the handle, you won't get mad, you won't you won't lose your temper. Um, now, if you're dealing with kids, because I know, Sandra, you have children and you're like, oh, I don't know if that's what you're referring back to, but you've got to accept the fact that children behave like children and they are what they are and that is that. And, and then, um, then, what you do is you decide how you want to raise them and you put in specific behaviors that you ex that you're that you are trying to teach them not expect from them but you're teaching them and and so when i was disciplining my kids a lot of times i felt that a certain um more stern or authoritative um you know, behavior was important, but inside of me, I wasn't really angry. I was more like laughing because I knew, I know what the behavior is going to end up like. You know, I know they're going to act like this. I know that when they grow up, they're going to be like this. And, and so I would maybe demonstrate something, but I really wasn't angry. It's just that I had to kind of like, absolutely no. And I accepted the fact that they were acting like children. I accepted that they were going to screw up. I accepted they were going to, you know, do all these things. So anger didn't come into the into the place. But sometimes I had to demonstrate certain things. And, and in situations, you do sometimes have to demonstrate um, something to get a point across with some people because, you know, their their brain gets locked into something and it starts going ah, and you have to kind of like do some shock to get them outside of it. So hopefully that helps. Um, so let's go back to being present. Um, why is it so important spiritually? Well, it's important spiritually to be present. Um, this is so helpful. It does come out mostly on my child. Yes, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> hey, I raised two of them. I have one that's 28 and one that's 25. So I know exactly what you're talking about. And, um, my daughter who's 28. She's absolutely amazing. I don't know if you saw her on that interview that I did with Jeff and, um, she is, she's actually just amazing, amazing, amazing woman, but she was challenging, you know, as a child. I mean, she was seriously challenging. <laughs> yes, she is great. And, um, but there was a, there was a lot of times where I was giggling so hard inside, but I had to like keep up a stern and, you know, like I had to put up that wall, like you will not cross it. And I told her, I was like, look Amanda here's the deal I am older wiser smarter I have more patience and I can do this all day long you will wear out faster than I will and um, and basically that's what happened I just stuck to my guns and said nope go back to your room she come run back out and I'm like nope go back to your room and I just kept on doing it and doing it and doing it until she learned and 
and there was and I would just sit there and laugh about it because I would be like okay I wonder how long she's gonna take this time and uh, <laughs> yeah yeah so you know, sometimes those really really smart kids will challenge you and so you can't you can't diminish their um, their self-esteem you just got to teach them because their brain is kind of all over the place so anyways um, back to being present boy I'm shifting all over the place today back to being present why is it important spiritually it's important spiritually because if you're not sitting right here in this moment this very second you're sitting on regret you're sitting on pain you're sitting in the past and there is no way that you can really spiritually connect with the I am presence God whatever you want to call it uh, the divine um, the universe whatever it is your belief is you there's no way that that connection can happen unless you are absolutely completely present so it's really important that you learn this technique that you learn how to be able to sit within yourself to be able to um, to sit quietly to be able to connect I've had some of the most beautiful experiences because I've learned how to be able to quiet my mind and and also too here's the thing if you're sitting there reading a book to your child so Sandra for example um, you have a small child and you're reading a book to your child if you are thinking about something else you're not really experiencing the bliss and the joy that that child's experiencing because you're thinking about God I gotta I gotta get up early I gotta go to work ah oh, geez I'm gonna go through the motions real quick read the story and get them to bed and that child senses all that and but if you can just be a hundred percent you know like think of Robin Williams and how he was with those kids in the hospital um, in one of these movies that he was in I don't remember which one it was called but he um, he were like I think it was one of those older ones and he had like that balloon nose you know like a clown and he would squeak it and he was very 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 present with these children that had like cancer and he would read books and he tell stories and he'd play with them and he was really 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 um, present with them and these children got so much joy out of it and you know it doesn't matter if it's five minutes that you're present you're like okay I'm gonna give you five minutes um, or if it's you know an hour whatever it is that you dict dictate give a hundred percent of your energy and then you have no regrets because tomorrow you're gonna be like oh my god I was a horrible parent I'm a horrible parent because I can't even do this and so if you can just be a hundred percent there you know I don't know if my mom's still on here or not but she did log in earlier and you know I can tell you right now she's very intuitive okay and so if if she's showing me something in the craft room and she's going over something with me and I'm kind of not I'm sort of like thinking about other stuff she is she's gonna notice and she's gonna say something to me and she's gonna go Michelle you know hey hey I'm talking to you and and that hurts people because they feel like they're not important so what is our goal here our goal as a spiritual being is to become enlightened and enlightened means to be love that's it that's it just be love that's it nothing else just be love that's all enlightenment is is to be love not to love not to act loving but to be love so what's the difference what's the difference okay to be love is <clears throat> everything you do is loving which which means that you're present so if you're outside and you're gardening and you're digging and you're really getting into your garden you're planting your garden and everything you're creating and love is creation it's when you're painting a picture you're you know that picture is going to be awesome if you're present and if you're not present and you're painting a picture it's probably going to get kind of crappy because you're thinking about other things but if you're really really present you know um, <clears throat> there's um, an old movie that I'm not sure exactly when it was 
produced, I think it was like the 80s or the 90s, it was called The Karate Kid. And the very first Karate Kid, um, he wanted to learn karate, so the old man says, all right, get out there and start painting the fence. And he's like, what, I came here to learn karate. And he's like, he goes, you know, and he did this, you know, swash up, swash down, swash, and he wanted him to get that structure up, you know, really strong, like get it straight and then go down. And, you know, and he said to kick your wrist like this, right? And then go back up and then go back down. And he was very instructional about how it was done. So the boy had to, had to literally paint the whole fence in this very specific structure. Then, uh, wax on, wax off. That's right. Yeah. And, and, um, there was like, and he taught him all these other things. He was having him wax things. He was having him paint things. He was having him, you know, do all these different things. And, and everything had to be in a specific way, right? At the very end, he said, when are you going to teach me karate? And he goes, you already learned it. And he goes, what are you talking about? And he says, okay, do wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. And that was one technique. And he was able to completely focus and learn something and be really good at it. When you are painting a picture, if you are painting and you're 100% focused about every little detail, you become an excellent artist. The difference between a really good artist and a, and a crappy artist is somebody who's present. So the difference between um, a person that is a good parent and a person that is, and I hate saying bad parent, but you know, a parent that's not present is a person that is whether or not they're present. And if you are there for your child, your child's gonna remember that. They're gonna come back when they're 20 years old, 30 years old, and they're gonna say, I remember when you did this. And they're gonna have good memories and it's gonna and it's gonna latch onto their life and it's gonna create a wonderful human being and so that's why it's so important and it's important in relationships husband wife boyfriend friends because it, it hurts the other person when they feel like that other things are much more important so what it all boils down to is being present is love it's about expressing love which which what you're saying is is this moment right now this person right now this action right now is the most important thing to me and nothing else matters and then and and you know it's more important that you spend a short period of time that's 100% present with somebody than it is for you to spend a long period of time and not be present it's it's about value so hopefully that helps you guys with the whole being present thing and um tomorrow i'm going to start doing 30 days okay so tomorrow i'll talk about something completely different but it's going to be principles spiritual principles to a spiritual bliss and um because like i said i'm not using the word enlightenment because enlightenment is really just love okay and so what we want to do is we want to realize is that we're completely capable. You just take these practices and you do it. And you, every single person has the ability to love. So every single person has the ability to be enlightened. And you're already there. All you have to do is just be love. That's it. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you, Sandra. I appreciate it. And y'all have an awesome day. Be love. Don't be a candle, because guess what? Candles can be blown out. Be the light. Just be love, okay? Just be love and be present. Be present. Everything you're doing, even if it's work, just be present, okay? Y'all have an awesome day. Bye.